For the last several years, as many of you know, I have fished with and tested a ton of ultralight gear. Now, the last two years, I've actually done a video at the end of the season doing an ultralight rod breakdown, where I share a lot of my opinions and perspectives on the various rod models that I've tested. This year, I'm gonna do it just a little bit differently. I'm actually going to be talking about rods, reels, and line. Main reason is because my rod opinions haven't changed a ton this year. So I wanted to focus a little bit more high level across the board and really just break down some of the different gear I used, what I liked and don't like, and then some of my plans for the future because obviously the ultralight fishing gear test will never stop. I just love doing this. It's a lot of fun. And I know you guys like it too. So I'm going to go through some of my favorite rods for the year, and then I'm going to go through some of my favorite reels for the year, and then I'm going to go through some of my favorite line for the year. And I would argue that line is one of the most important parts of an ultralight fishing system, so I'm going to save that one for last because I think it's super, super important. First off, let's start with rods. So I've got one, two, three ultralight rods with me right here, and the reason I brought these three is because these are probably the most used ultralight rods for the season for me, and they're definitely some of my favorites that I still have. I want to be very, very clear. A lot of the rods I've used in the past I have loved, but I've given them away, so I don't have them right now, and I haven't really had a chance to fish with them because I've given them away. A man only needs so many different fishing rods, so I would say stay tuned to the channel and to the website and all that stuff because I'll probably give away more gear in the future. Um, so I want to be very clear, you can always refer back to my previous videos, my opinions really have not changed. I still love a 13 Fishing Defy Silver, a Shimano Sensolite for budget rods, I still love the Temple Fork for like a mid-range rod. These rods that I've used this year have been a little bit higher range. Not necessarily super, super expensive, but definitely up there a little bit. So I'm going to share some of my opinions on these rods and just talk about why I like them. First one I grabbed by, no, I really didn't even mean to, I just grabbed it. Um, this is the Phoenix Elixir. This is actually my most recently purchased rod, I believe. I got this later in the season. It's a 7 foot 6 rod. The reason I really, really like this one is because it maintains a pretty fast action and it also balances extremely well with a size 1000 reel at a seven foot six length. I mean, what's not to love there? The other thing is I would say it's a very versatile rod blank. It's very, very similar in a lot of ways to the Temple Fork, except it's probably a higher quality blank, higher quality rod materials in general, um, and it also balances better. So I would say... If you like the Temple Fork, you would probably like the Phoenix Elixir. You probably would actually like it better. You obviously have to spend a little bit more. But this is definitely one of my favorite rods that I currently have, and I don't anticipate getting rid of it because it is something that I've been very much enjoying. As far as like what I like it best for, I think I'm gonna like this a lot, quite honestly, for like spoon fishing. I really think I'm gonna like it a lot for fishing a slip float, um, but I've enjoyed it for jig fishing and just about anything else I've used. It definitely is a versatile stick. The next rod that I have here is actually this Yamaga Blanks Blue Current 3. This was a gift to me. I didn't actually buy this. Someone sent it to me and it's so light and portable and that is why I find myself always picking it up. It's 5 foot 10. It doesn't necessarily feel super short, but it acts so it just acts so great on the water. I love how fast it is, but it is just so 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 lightweight. So, when I just want like a true ultralight experience, when I want something that's like compact, you know, portable, lightweight, comfortable to fish with. This is usually what I grab. Um, so this is definitely one of my favorites. I don't really want to get rid of this one either because it was a gift and I feel like there's not really any other rod that I've fished with that is quite like it. Um, definitely maintains a fast action. It does not have a solid tip, which I'm going to talk about with the Dobbins, which is next. Um, but I just say it just really performs super, super well. So I really, really like that rod. And then lastly, like I said, the Dobbins. You know, the Dobbins has been my baby since the day I got it. I really, really like this ultralight. Some people probably don't even feel like this is a true ultralight, but that's just because it has that solid tip. And there's been other rods I've tested in the past that have a solid tip, but what I mean by a solid tip is it basically is a carbon tip where it's going to be really, really thin, but it's going to be extremely fast in action. So it's amazing for jig fishing. And as you guys know, I love fishing an ultralight jig. I feel like out of all the ultralight techniques you can possibly use, a jig is the most versatile, and I feel like you can catch just about anything on it. So that's what I find myself fishing with 99% of the time, and that's why I really like this rod. It balances well, it's comfortable to fish with, and the second you hook a fish, you do recognize that it truly is an ultralight experience. Um, the last thing that I'll say is this is the six foot two model. A lot of people have asked me that in the past. 
I definitely want to try a little bit longer Dobbins at some point. I have not had the chance to fish with like a six foot seven or a seven foot Dobbins Sierra uh, trout and pattern fish spinning rod, um, but I'm hopeful that I can do that in the future. So I might actually buy another one at some point. For the time being though, the six foot two has been extremely versatile for me. So those are my top three for the year. Um, again, I wanna be very, very clear. It's not to say that I don't like other rods as much as these ones. It's just a matter of these are the ones that I currently have and these are the ones that have done extremely well for me and I just find myself not willing to get rid of. I don't wanna get rid of these rods because I really, really like them and they all have kind of unique value to me. I will say the Dobbins is probably my number one. That one has always been my baby since day one that I got it and there's just something about it that feels right in my hands. So that is kind of the rod that I always find myself going back to. Now, let's talk about reels. If you've ever asked me for advice on buying a spinning reel for ultralight, you've all gotten pretty much the same answer. For me personally, I like Shimano or Daiwa size 1000 90% of the time. Every now and again, I'll step it up to a 2000 size reel if I feel like it will help balance the rod better or maybe I feel like I need a little bit more line capacity. I generally don't go down to a 500 size only because that spool diameter tends to be smaller. And if you'll recall one of my ultralight reel videos, a lot of times I find that you can cast not quite as far with that smaller spool diameter. So a size 1000 is almost always what I find myself fishing with. This is a Daiwa Procyon LT1000. This is actually a discontinued model. Um, I didn't fish with it as much this year, but it still is one of my favorite reels that I own. I just feel like the drag system on this one is really good. It's just very comfortable for me. It balances well with most of the rods that I like. So this is definitely one of my favorite reels. That being said, the other ones that I've been fishing with, well, shoot, all these rods are all tangled up, of course. So I'm just gonna pick them all up at the same time. This is gonna be an absolute mess, but I feel like it'll be a good way to kind of show it. So, oh boy. So, so here we have three different reels. And as I mentioned, size 1000. This is 1000, this is 1000, this is 1000. Shimano, Daiwa, Shimano. As I said, I kind of have the trusted brands. You know, it's not to say that I haven't used other brands. I've used 13 Fishing and Luz and some of those other ones. And it's not that they're bad necessarily, but I have a lot more trust for these brands. I feel a lot more comfortable and confident in these brands. I feel like they're gonna last longer. I feel like their drag is smoother. Um, and yeah, I just, I tend to trust them again get what you trust and what you like. There's a lot of great brands out there and I'm not gonna dog on any of them. These are the ones that I tend to like myself. The one that I will say I've used probably as much as any of them is actually the Shimano Sedona. This was like a $70 reel. I believe they just updated a new version of it, but it's probably pretty similar. I'm not gonna tell you that it's the best reel in the world, but it's been a workhorse for me. The one thing that has been kind of a watch out area for me is the fact that because it has probably some cheaper components and parts, I've found that the drag has been a little bit wonky a few times. And I don't know if it's that I'm burning it down and kind of wearing out the drag, or if it was just a fluke that day or what, but there's been a couple times where I felt like the drag just kind of gave out for like a, a short period of time. Again, I have beaten this reel up. I have fished it a ton. And it's obviously a lower price point reel. So generally speaking, they're not going to take the same amount of abuse, but it's just something that I've kind of noticed. Other than that though, it's been an incredibly great reel for like 70 bucks. And most people probably don't put their reels through the same works as I do. I fish a lot. I fish them hard and I don't mind doing that. Um, so overall, I've been very, very, very impressed with this reel, but I think it's starting to wear off a little bit solely because it is a little bit lower price point. The next one I'll talk about, this one is a Daiwa. This is a, this is actually a JDM reel. Again, this was a gift as well. I'm not gonna talk about this one a ton. I would say it's very similar in a lot of ways to a lot of the domestic lineup of uh, Daiwa reels. The biggest difference is that it has a shallow spool. I do like a shallow spool because you don't have to put as much line on there um, and you don't necessarily a lot of times need 300 yards of line. So I do like a shallow spool. Doesn't really matter that much. All in all, all of my Daiwa 1000 reels have been great from the Revros LT1000 all the way up to the Tatula. They've all been really good. They've performed well for me. And then lastly, I've talked about this one in a couple of videos. I picked up the Shimano Nasi this year. This is their new Nasi model. Um, I picked it up and I feel like it's been really, really good to me. There is one call out that I've noticed and somebody else actually mentioned it in the comments. So I'm not the only one that's experienced this. 
I gotta untangle all these jigs, one second. The only nitpicky thing I have about the Nasi, the drag has been good, it's balanced well, it's smooth, it's comfortable, there's no major issues. The one nitpicky thing is this right here, where the spool, um, where the line comes off the spool, this little crack right here, the line sometimes gets caught in there. And I don't know how it happens, but it's happened numerous times. And braid is obviously extremely thin, and I use braid, and it's happened a few times. And I'm always nervous that it's gonna put a weak point in my line because it's gonna create some form of abrasion. And so I don't know why that little crack exists. I don't know why the line finds its way into there so many times, but it's happened enough to where it's, I feel it truly is a watch out. Other than that, like I said, really like the reel. I'm not gonna get rid of it because of that. It's just something you kind of have to watch out for. And as I mentioned, I've actually had people mention that to me in the past, so it tells me that I'm not alone. So nothing necessarily earth shattering there. Those are the reels that I've fished with. And like I said, I just have a lot of trust in them. They've done well for me. Their drag systems are good. And that's really important for ultralight fishing because a lot of times when you hook those little bit bigger fish, your drag, it needs to be smooth. But all in all, no matter if I'm fishing a $50 reel all the way up to a $200 reel, that Daiwa and Shimano lineup, they've both been good to me. So that's what I trust and that's probably what I'm gonna stick to. That being said, if you ever have suggestions, feel free to let me know. I know a lot of you have recommended reels from Cast King, as well as, you know, Luz, as well as Fluger, list goes on. Nothing wrong with any of those. I, I like what I like, but I'm absolutely always willing to experiment with new ones as well. Last and arguably most important for ultralight fishing, line. Let's talk about some of the lines that I've used this year, some of the ones that I've really, really liked, and some of the ones that I want to test moving into 2024. Now, first and foremost, I will say this. I've talked a lot about line in the past, and the more that I ultralight fish and the more that I experiment, the more that I find myself using braided fishing line. I think it is highly, highly important, however, to talk about what braided fishing line. You know, for me personally, I've used a lot of Spro, and I've used a lot of Daiwa J Braid, Grand X8. Now, I use the six pound variety because that's what I've been able to find. I do feel like six pound is probably overkill in a lot of times, but that six pound size is very, very thin, so it casts extremely effectively. If there was a two or four pound, I would probably try it. I do get a little nervous, to be honest with you, because I think once you get down to that size, it gets extremely thin, and I'm almost nervous that it may start to act up a little bit um, and maybe actually get more wind knots or tangles. Um, so I'm going to continue to experiment with smaller sizes, um, but all in all, I would say my highlights, my shining stars have really been the Spro Finesse Braid um, in the six pound. I like the, the pink. It's just really cool. It's different. Um, you can see it. You can also get a green one. And then the Daiwa J Braid. As I spoke about when I did a video on this line, I find that the Daiwa J Braid, I've had it break randomly a couple times and I haven't experienced that with this so I would rank this one slightly above but for the most part they're very 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 similar and you can definitely you know save a little bit of money by going with the J braid because it's probably 10 plus dollars cheaper for a spool so that obviously helps as well. I do want to call out that I plan to experiment more with braid. The biggest thing is I hate wasting line and braid lasts a long time so I haven't been stripping it off my spools but I have a fresh spool of this Phoenix Iron Feather I have had so many recommendations for this braid. So I have super, super high hopes for this. My guess is it's going to be another really high quality option. Um, the big thing with braid that I've noticed and some of the lower price point you know, options or just some of the competitive options across the market is sometimes braid gets wiry. It gets a little stiffer, it gets less manageable. And the big, big, big thing when it comes to ultralight fishing, that is a no-no. That wiry braid, that stuff that holds a memory it doesn't cast near as effectively. So I've tried everything from, you know, the Berkeley Fire lines to the Power Pro to the Suffix 832. Um, and I, I'm not gonna tell you I don't like the lines, but I don't necessarily prefer them for ultralight fishing because those lines just, they, they tend to be a little bit more wiry. And there's probably pros and cons to that, but for me, I find that they don't cast lightweight lures as effectively as the J-Braid or the Spro. And again, I want to test the Iron Feather. I want to test a couple other lines. I know some people like some other brands as well. Um, so I'm going to continue to test. Now I should talk about leader material. A lot of people ask me in my videos, hey, are you just fishing straight braid? No, I, I pretty much never fish straight braid unless I run out of a leader and I don't happen to have any with me on the water. 
Um, as far as leader material goes, I usually tie about six feet or so, and then I'll fish it down to anywhere from two to three feet. Um, you know, as you break off, as you retie, you're obviously gonna lose leader line. Um, so I'll fish it down to, you know, a couple feet, but usually I tie on anywhere from six to eight feet, and I just kind of go from there. Now, a lot of people ask me what knot I use, and I pretty much exclusively use a double uni knot. The reason I like the double uni knot is because that's what I first learned. I know it really well. I can tie it extremely fast, and it has virtually never failed me. If I break off, I almost always break off the leader line and not the knot. So I don't see any reason to change. It goes through the guides just fine. So I, I really just, I trust it. I'm gonna stick with it. I know a lot of people have other knots they like as well, and there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe I'll experiment with it more in the future someday, but for me, I'm kind of old school. I feel like if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and it ain't broke, so I'm not gonna fix it. Um, as far as leader lines go, though, in the past year, I've used two primarily. The first would be Trilene Sensation. This is a four pound. When I'm using six pound braid, I do prefer four pound leader because I find that it cushions that braid a little bit better. Going down to a two pound, I just feel like there's too much of a difference between six pound braid strength and four, uh, two pound you know, copolymer uh, strength. I find that there's just too much likelihood of breaking off, so I like to use a four pound. You know, these are both copolymer lines. I will say, I believe the Trilene Sensation may have been discontinued. It's unfortunate because I've always felt that this is an extremely value-friendly line that works really well. Whether you spool it up straight or use it as a leader, I've been a huge fan of this. And unfortunately, I believe that Berkeley may have discontinued it. Um, fortunately for me, I was at Cabela's and I found a bunch of clearance. I think I've got a couple of spools left and this is two pound. So if I am gonna fish a straight copolymer, I would rig up a two pound. I like how low diameter it is cast super well. Um, it is much tougher. It, it, it feels like it holds up to abrasion really well. So I find that two pound copolymer is kind of my, my sweet spot. I'm not huge on fluorocarbon. I find that it's very brittle once you get into the less than six pound test. I obviously use fluorocarbon primarily for bass fishing, but that line is significantly stronger. When it gets to the ultralight stuff, I just find that it's a little brittle and uh, I just find that it breaks. So I'm gonna experiment more. I bought some more fluorocarbon. I wanna try it more. But as of right now, I definitely trust braid and copolymer the most. The other copolymer leader that I've been using is this Yozuri Hybrid. It's another value-friendly option. I will be honest with you, it definitely has a higher diameter. Um, so that's not as ideal. I probably wouldn't wanna spool this up straight because it's probably gonna cut down on your casting distance. Um, but as a leader, it's been fine. It's held up to a lot of fish. And uh, when you're using a leader line, it doesn't necessarily matter how, how big the diameter is because it doesn't affect your casting distance as much. And in a four pound test, it's still gonna be plenty invisible for fish. Anyways, that's been kind of my experience for the year. Those have been my gear choices for the year. I think the big question I have for you is what do you want to see me fish with or test this year? Is there a specific rod, reel, or line? Let me know, I will be honest with you. I get a lot of recommendations, so I probably won't test them all, but those ones that I get that are common between numerous comments, I'll probably pick up. I like to experiment, I like to test things, and I like to offer you that value so that way you don't have to necessarily buy every rod. You can see my videos and pick the one that you feel is gonna work best for you. Anyways, thanks for watching this year. Life has been pretty busy for me lately, so I'll be honest with you, I'm probably not gonna be able to fish very much for a while. That being said, I do have full intentions of getting back out there and making a ton of fishing videos this spring, so stay tuned, my friends, stay tuned. Have a great day, we'll catch you next time.